When Home Depot reported its excellent quarter yesterday, the company cited the strength of the housing market, driven by new household formation. Now, most of the homeowners have seen their stocks roar pretty dramatically since we started bouncing back from the Great Recession. But some of them have kind of lagged behind the rest of the group. Take TriPoint Group, TPH. It's a designer of single-family homes and condos in Seattle, Southern California, most of the big cities in the Southwest, Washington, D.C., a stock that hasn't had much momentum since it came public in 2013. In fact, this thing came public at 17, nearly four and a half years ago, and now it's trading around 12 and change. Ouch. But lately, TriPoint has begun to churn higher. Stock's up almost 8% year to date, so I think it's certainly worth wondering if the turn here is for real. We know the company delivered a solid quarter three weeks ago. While the headline numbers were mixed, small earnings miss on top of a sizable revenue beat, underneath there was a lot to like. TriPoint's backlog up 13% year to date, over a year over year, plus management's full year outlook was very positive. So can they be uh, starting to come back here? Let's take a closer look with Doug Bowery. He's the CEO of TriPoint Group. Get a better sense of how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Bowery, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. All right, have a seat. So today we had a dramatic move in interest rates of where they came down, and uh, that can help the affordability of homes. Does that matter to a company like TriPoint? It, it does, but, you know, we're very opportunistic. We okay. build about 30% entry level, 40%, 50% move up okay. in, in the balanced luxury. So we're not as, as sensitive to interest rates as okay. an entry level bu uh, builder. Now, we've, we've gotten some great news on home sales, but some bad news on housing starts. Why don't you give us your perspective on this market? Because housing does punch above its weight. It's very important for the U.S. economy. Well, as you noted, I mean, we had a 13% increase in orders, and there's demand across all segments, entry level, move up to luxury. Our absorption pace has been very strong. We have the second highest ASP compared Very to toll right. uh, in the mid 500s, and we're still selling about three and a half communities per month, uh, and that's a very strong pace. And, and the demand is real. Uh, I mean, right. it's across not only the 25 to 35 year old, the millennials, but also the active adult and the, and the Gen X is in between. Okay. So it's very broad based. But can you help us here? You know, Barry Sternlich comes on our network <clears throat> a lot from Starwood, and he was chairman. He resigned. He wasn't happy. What was? What's your side to him? Because, you know, if the company's just starting to come back, it's not the right time to sell. Well, I mean, we, we had eight great years uh, with Starwood, okay. and, and, and it, we really appreciated their investment. But, you know, our strategy and outlook has not changed. As you, as you look at the company, we uh, reiterated 2017 guidance. As a matter of fact, right. we also provided 2018 delivery guidance of 5,100 to 5,400 deliveries by two, end of 2018. If you take a look at the midpoint of that range from 2014 through 2018, that's a 17% annual growth rate. So right. it's a pretty good growth rate that we've got built in, in into the company uh, for the next couple of years. Is that why uh, you, your company's been pretty active buying back stock? Well, our stock is, as you uh, mentioned, is, right. I think, underappreciated. Yeah. Um, as you may recall, we did a reverse Morris Trust right. with Warehouser Real Estate Company. You also know that a home builder is only as good as their land inventory. Mm -hmm. Last November, we took a look at the inventory, the 13,000 lots in California, and we came up with a value of about $15.33 as far as an implied mm -hmm. book value. What that tells me today is we're trading at about a 20% discount to book. Well, this so is a, a great opportunity. I mean, look, and, and KB Homes had the same thing. I mean, we liked KB Homes at 12. Mm -hmm. All the analysts told us we were just completely wrong. And, and then caught an eight-point move because exactly what you said, there's a scarcity of California land. I mean, I know that during the height of the craziness, we heard, well, they're not making any more land. But the fact is, is that California is the strongest market in the country, isn't it? it, it by far. I mean, we had growth in our orders of over 38% in the first quarter, quarter over quarter. You you go from San Diego, where we're building entry-level product at 400000 mm -hmm. I know that's entry-level in California. Right. All the way up to $2 million luxury homes that are selling four or five a month. So the, the key is, is that we have this land that we inherited from the purchase of RICO, or right. Warehouse or Real Estate right. Company, and it's entitled. Most of it's entitled 15,000 lots in a very entitlement-constrained market. Right. So it creates a great opportunity for the investors over the next several years because we, we will pull that inventory through the P&L right. for the next several years. And that's where the value is. And, and that's where we feel a little underappreciated. Yeah, I, look, I don't blame you because I like where so when the previous CEO was going over his holdings, I said, geez, this is just a great yeah. land bank. And you've taken advantage of it. Now, we've heard from a couple of home builders, labor's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I know your gross margins, I think, are pretty good. Mm -hmm. But uh, how hard is it to find people? It isn't hard. There's labor out there. It, it has extended cycle times over the last mm -hmm. couple of years. 
The key to, to, to solving the labor issue long term, though, is really as an industry, and this is something as an industry group we're looking at, is getting into the high schools and getting a better educational component, the construction business. It's been politically incorrect to talk about going to vocational school. Yes, it has. The and previous needs, administration it discouraged it. It needs to change. Right. They wanted everyone to go to college, and you know, that doesn't necessarily produce a job. And not everybody doesn't. goes to college, right? right? We know that. So oh, there's right. a great opportunity for students today to, to create a great living and not incur that student debt. I totally agree. Now, the last question. Uh, President uh, wants uh, people to stop dumping lumber in our country. Uh, but lumber is a, an important component of cost for housing. What does that mean for you guys? Well, the, the cost of lumber, like everything, the markets are pretty efficient. It started going up in the fourth quarter of last it, it year. It anticipated it entirely. It did. And if you actually looked at the future market after the tariff was discussed, right. the headline, it was down it 10%. Down. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. So we built into that, uh, that cost pressure on lumber. And frankly, we've been able to pass that along with our prices of our houses. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't affected our gross margins going forward right now. Well, look, I, I completely, look, KB Homes was hated. You guys are, are not loved the way the other guys. It doesn't make sense to me because I know what that situation is like in California. You've got great land. All right, that's Doug Bauer, CEO of TriPoint Group. Take a look at where their land is located. And if you know California, you know that they're in the right spot. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.